Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. This is Beyond Scared Straight with a dude named Big Dragon. Now, Big Dragon is a Mexican gang guy who's got double life sentence, and uh, he talks to these kids. Well, the video is real good. I, I looked at it and, and I wanted to touch on what he said and the kids and the kids' attitude in this uh, video. So this is gonna be a really good video. Before I get started, please check us out on YouTube member program, Patreon member programs. Please subscribe if you haven't. You know, we, we love new people coming on all the time. Check Gangster Redemption. Amazing book that's going crazy every day. And I keep saying that because it's non-stop. And, and the more people that read it, I think the more people pass the word on how good the book is. So anyway, with that said, let's jump into this video. Yeah, I just got convicted on two murders, man. I'm gonna do the rest of my life in prison. I've been locked up all my life already. My name's Big Dragon. Every time I keep picked up crimes, I just dug myself deeper and deeper. Well, I'm buried now, you know? I can't get out anymore. We had a guy in Atlanta, man, who reminded me just like him. But instead of the goatee, he had the, the, the thing that went down, like the Fu Manchu. He's the South Sider, as they call him. He's a Sareño. He was a badass motherfucker. Kind of like this. Life sentence, never getting out. Did nothing but work out, obviously. He was in a maximum security. He'll never get lowered in a maximum security prison either. This guy won't either. He's got two life sentences, so he's going to talk from experience. And what touched me on here is, he, he listen... But, you know, for the grace of God, there you go. His upbringing and what happened doesn't seem like a, a out-of-touch guy. And I met a lot of guys just like him in the joint. That's why I like this video. Who's this gangbanging? <laughs> huh? You say you ain't. Yeah. What about you? Where you from? Tell him. Tell him where you from. Where you from, man? Varelas. Varelas? I'm from Sonko, eh? You know, we don't even like you guys, eh? That is so true. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you're a, I'm a Mexican, I'm going to get along. No, they fight within themselves. So no matter who you are in prison, whether you're a white guy or a black guy or a, a Hispanic guy, you fight within your own kind. You, I mean, it's not all just get with your kind and you're safe. That doesn't happen either. So what happens is you might, again, especially gang members, you might be from a certain street in L.A., and they don't get along with another street in L.A. And before you know it, you're beefing. And obviously, you Nortena, know, Serenos, there's, you know, there's two the gangs that they usually try to keep apart. But a boy I've seen in Nortena on a Sereno yard and within the guy coming out of R&D after the hole. Now, he ain't snitching on himself saying, oh, I can't go on this yard. I'm a Nortena. They're, they're, they're tough motherfuckers, some of these kids. And what do they do? He gets out of the hole. Which, out of the seg, which is he was in there for a captain's review. He comes out of the hole, so heading to this unit. They already know. The prison Sarenos already know who he is. They know when he hits the yard. They had a lookout. When he hit that door, they were going to hit him. Sure enough, that guy didn't even get to his unit, and he was stabbed, I don't know, 20 times. Right there. Taken away. Stabbed 20 times right there. That quick it happens. This guy's telling him, hey, man, we don't even like you guys. And he's right. That does happen. You laughing or uh, laugh at me, fool? This change ain't gonna stop me, huh? Well, the change would stop him. <laughs> I mean, they do stop you. Unless you could slip them. I get what his point was. Uh, you know, these punk-ass kids sometimes think, you know, oh, uh, I'm a badass. But here's what he says, which is really powerful. Now watch this. You know, when you come in here, you ain't gonna have all these cops here to protect you, eh? You're gonna be in a cell with just me and you. What do I always call them? Cops. We call guards cops. You can have all these cops here to protect you. Now remember, he's in his leg irons and belly chains and everything else because he's in segregation. He's already in the hole. He's in probably, I'm going to guess, administration segregation because he's a gangbanger and they probably put them in long-term segregation, which is so fucking wrong. It is really wrong, people. It really is. But that's probably where they put him. And they do have a lot of guards around him. Uh, obviously, two life sentences, you know. What happens if he went up to one of these kids and just smashed him with his head, headbutt him, did something. Because the guy with two life sentences is not going to care. This guy actually cares, and you're going to hear why. You think you could bang with me or what? If I had to. Huh? If I had to. So, I'm making my bitch, fool. I 
it's funny or what? I'm gonna be in prison for a long time, man. I'm gonna remember you. And when you show up, I got someone waiting for you. Did you hear what he just said? And that is the truth. No, that kid's smart enough or thinks he knows enough that this guy can't get to him. But if this kid goes to prison, he already forgot. The big thing what people don't get with, with convicts is we remember stuff. I remember, you know, when during a riot, I actually worked for a guy named Perry. Wow, I do have a decent memory. I, went, I worked for a guy named Perry. He was a guard in the kitchen in Atlanta. Now, he was through the Atlanta riots during the Cuban uh, takeover in 86 or 87. You can look it up. Uh, they took over the prison and he was a hostage and he said he said to the to the new inmates at all to, uh, new guards he used to train and they mess they didn't mess with him now the inmates these cubans didn't mess with him because he was nice to people he respected people he treated them right they protected him other guards were not protected i mean they let one guard get raped in front of his wife and raped his wife i mean some sick stuff in prison and uh, they did that during this whole entire lockdown. He used to tell the story, treat these people like you would treat somebody else, like your parents or somebody, just like a human being, because they'll never forget. Remember that. I'll never forget. You know my saying. But it's true. We, you know, if you slight me or if you do something wrong to me, and I, it festers with me for a year, it's going to be in me. And if I ever saw that person again, uh, especially like this guy saying, I'm going to remember you, dude. You're going to come in this prison, and now you're in my house. And this kid better put that in the back of his mind when he gets out, because that is true. Is this your little brother? Well, you should be showing him, you know, a better example, dog. All my little brothers have been locked up. All of us are doing time, man. And when I see my brother's hand go like this, it gets me sad. It makes me want to cry, dog, because I blame myself because I could have showed him better. He looks up to you, dog. Do you want him locked up like this? Let me tell you how, how powerful that was to me. Uh, I was in prison with my brother. Well, not in. I was in a lot before him. He came s almost six years later uh, after the whole story, which you know if you haven't known about it, look in the playlist. But I'll do another one with him because his uh, ex told on him. And that's a whole long story. Uh, but I was in there and we were put in a prison together and then when I went crazy in one prison and he tried to help me they locked him in they locked the, the unit down he couldn't get out the door to help me when I was going crazy wanting to fight everybody and do what I did and then we were separated and never seen again until we got out of prison also my brother and I my brother's son and my very close to me nephew got shot killed in the drug game uh, I tried to tell him to get out of the game and he didn't, and he was killed in the street in Pennsylvania, and it, and it hurts me to this day. I have a tattoo on my arm right here. David Jr. And, and that hurt me when I saw that, because that dude lost two brothers, and, and uh, uh, he was the oldest too. I mean, you know, especially as an older brother, uh, you, you know, you kind of hurt with, with your family members. And, and no matter what they are, nephews, nieces, uh, uncles, whatever it is, it, it's going to hurt. Even good friends, bro, man, it's going to hurt. But these kids are hearing somebody not yelling, not screaming, just telling the facts. That's what I do. And that's why I like this guy, Big Dragon. Living in the barrio, doing what you're doing, huh? not giving a That's what's going to happen. Don't show them how to smoke weed and all that shit. Show them right. You smoking weed? You smoking weed? I smoke weed. The cops say, you know, the cop has to chime in there. Leave the fucking guy do his job. Leave Big Dragon do his shit. Because that cop kid respects that Big Dragon more than that cop. Now, listen, the cop, you know, smoking weed, I, I, I usually don't even say it. Yes, it's wrong for young people. You know I always say that, and I know what people do. And trust me, I don't judge people. You know that. I just want your brains to develop in the right way and in a big enough way that you, you have the best opportunities in life to make it. All of these kids looking around are smart kids, man. They're just down the wrong path. I smoke weed. You smoke? Oh, this one took to take cocaine to school. That's right. cocaine? You took cocaine for somebody else, right? Yes, sir. And who did you take it for? Your homies? This kid supposedly took cocaine to school for other people. I mean, at that age, do we know if it's for other people or somebody else? Uh, obviously, it's from somebody bigger 
uh, that's gonna give him cocaine. But if it was a house product, like p pills out of his mom's uh, jar or so, I've got those. I've got 12 year old kids that was selling Oxycontin pills in school. And those kids, a couple of them got busted and they were sent what they call DF, direct file to the adult court. One was 14 year old kid, direct file. Some serious stuff. Well, this kid took it for somebody else and if that's true, what a crash dummy he is. Somebody asked him to take cocaine, so he took it to school for him. Facing so if somebody tells you to run into the wall, you're gonna run into the wall. You're gonna be a crash dummy, yeah? Is that what you wanna be or what? I'm just telling you, cause I'm a homie, yeah? I'm from the, from the hood too, dog. Been through it, done it. The way he's talking, Big Dragon, makes me appreciate what he's talking about because he's not yelling and screaming. And I know how easy it is to get hot and mad and stuff. Especially, it, it really hurts. Guys like him, who's gonna be away and he's been in and out of jail probably his whole life. Guys like myself who've been down, you know, we look at it and it hurts us because we see such wasted talent. We see us in you and that makes us think, come on guys, you can do better than that, you know? Learn from our stupid mistakes. Don't go where Larry was. Don't go where this dude was. But, he's, I like the way he speaks. Why are you not smiling and laughing at him? You smile laughing at everybody else. Why, because he got more tattoos than you? Huh? The tattoos make him look dangerous? Without the tattoos, that's a dangerous man. He didn't get those tattoos just by putting them on him like you put yours on there. He earned those tattoos. These are all homemade tattoos in a joint, one needle. Yeah, one needle tattoos. Trust me, I know what he's talking about. Takes a long time to do a tattoo. There's no shading needles or anything like that in the joint. Now, it's the, he's right. The tattoos don't make you look uh, bad or you make you bad. You, you are bad because the way you act, the what you did, and what you are capable of. I know what I'm capable of and sometimes I don't like that. Uh, I think I'm getting older and, and uh, a lot calmer and a lot, a lot better in life. And I really do. And uh, I'm happy about that. So, but I, this brought back a lot of memories. Show him your tattoos. I see your tattoos. Show him Can your you know, uh, Oh, you got that tattoo on your neck? I just got it because my dad had it. Huh? Because my real dad had it. So you're not a Burkhani or uh, You know when you come in here, what's going to happen to you? Wearing that shit on your neck like that? Huh? Something bad. If you go to prison with that on your neck, I feel sorry for you, dude. He's right. I've seen guys have tattoos come to prison and not be what they were, and I watched a guy get his uh, tattoo ironed off him. You know what I just said? Strapped in a chair and ironed off him. So they, they don't play. You know, you think you can get a, a shamrock on you and go to prison because you think you're a badass? So the shamrock is the uh, Aryan Brotherhood tattoo. They see that tattoo on you, they'll burn it off. They'll burn it off you. Uh, they, don't, they don't play. They don't play. Just like these guys don't play. He's, he's what he's talking about. There's a tattoo that represents a specific gang or whatever it is. And if you ain't a member of that and you got that on you like you think you're a badass, that ain't working, homie. That ain't working. Well, here, you're going to get punked, dog. I got punked when I came in. You ain't going to come in here and think you're a badass. You're going like, to come in here and you're going you're gonna to get your ass beat. Everybody does. He's right. You come to prison, you're going to get your ass beat. You're going to be fighting. Many times, uh, fights in the bathroom or a TV room or whatever you got to do. And you might come out fucked up or not, but you, you're going to get in a lot of fights. It's just, he's right. Especially young kids is what he's talking about. Once you get arrested, I'm going to tell you right now, eh? I got arrested and it just starts going downhill. You pick up one case, then you pick up another one. And before you know it, you're burying yourself. Didn't we just tell you that? Deeper and deeper and deeper. Look at me, I'm never gonna see the streets again. What he said is so true, and I'm gonna explain that. First time they get you charged, let's just say you're 18 years old, 19 years old, you get a charge, and you're facing seven to 10, you're facing a lot, or whatever it is. The prosecutor's gonna come to you and offer you a few years. They're gonna say, not even, they're gonna say, ah, let's give you six months probation. Let's do the right thing, go to drug treatment, you're done. Wow, you think good, but now you got a felony. It's your first felony. Then you're gonna come back, because you're a screw up, and you're gonna come back three years later, and you're gonna have another case. They're not gonna bury you yet. Listen to this guy, he's right. They're not gonna bury you yet. All of a sudden, you're facing time, they're gonna give you a year. You're gonna go a year, maybe a year and a half, two, you're gonna go to the uh, prison, you're gonna probably go to a low security at a small amount of time, unless it's a real violent offense. 
And now you're going to be going and you're going to get out and you're going to think, okay, I'm cool and everything's good. And then they're going to hit you another time. Before you know it, they got you. And before you know it, you're doing a long stretch, if not life. Certain, certain states still have three strikes and it has to be certain offenses, but they have them. And they're no joke. And this dude is telling 100% the truth. Listen to him. Never. But you know, this is the, I chose that path, you know. I chose it at a, at a young age and I always thought I could get, yeah, I'll get my act together later, later, later. But later never came. All right, thanks. All right, let's go. Line them up, through the door, straight to booking. Did you see the way he talked to those young guys? I really think he was a good dude. I like that dude. Big Dragon, much respect. The way you handled it. But you handled it like I would handle it. You're older, you're, you're, you're you know, past the yelling and screaming, I'm a tough guy shit. He is a tough guy, and I know that's the way I talk to people, because I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I'm gonna only tell you the truth. He started at a young age like I did, and we all, we all end up down the wrong path, man. And this video really was done right. Not the other ones, you see him screaming and yelling in your face. I, I can't stand him. I, I, wanna, I wanna grab the guy myself. Because if I was that kid, it wouldn't work at all. And it won't work with 99% of the or 90% of the kids. Well, it's proven not to work. But those people who do that just want to get off on that. They think they're badasses themselves. Or they just got that power hungry and this in them and they want to show it. This guy didn't do that. This guy told it like it is. And you know what? That's the kind of dudes I hung around with in the joint. Because we used to do our hustles, if you want to call it that, whether it's gambling or whatever in the joint. We got along. I used to pull paperwork for some of them guys, you know, some of the guys that want to know what he's really about and stuff. And I would learn his case and see if he had what they call 5K1, which is a downward departure for snitching or, you know, he, we wouldn't know if he had a rule 35 yet, but uh, that's what happens when they go back after they get a lot of time. So, but we would know by the petitions that are put into the court what was going on. But with that said, this dude was all right. I really give him a lot of respect. Good for you, man. I like him. Big Dragon, you did a great job. Young people, listen. This is not a joke I talk about. I love this channel because I hope you listen. We're going to talk more about certain stuff. Have some fun. Please have a great day. Just make good choices. You've got to deal about this. Always remember that. Do something positive for somebody, for you and that person. And I'll make everybody a better person. Have a great day, everybody. Stay strong. Stay safe. See you soon.